see here well of course during the first year ladies we have as I said completely black um, ladies you are able to wear uh, brooches um, cameos now this one is more suitable for the second year because it has gold around it and it's a bit of the cameo is a bit white so you can see that's better for the second year now I'm going to show you this is a morning pin ladies and this is this is it's it's dull it's it's very flat um there is no shine and it's there it's of a lady's hand uh holding a basket of uh, black roses and that is a morning pin and you can pin that on your your shirtwaist your suit coat whatever um you can put on all your shirtwaists at your neck and this is the proper um jewelry for your first year in mourning and signifying especially for the the widows for those of us who may have lost uh, our dear husbands i cannot even imagine it but um for you that have lost your husband or possibly a father or a brother this is the most proper piece of adornment that you should have on now your as far as your uh, earrings and these date back to these actually belong to my mother and she wore these um, during her mourning periods um, after my father and you can see they are uh, the black uh, onyx or with the jet also with the jet glass um, pieces at the top of the earring and there's a very dull um, gray metal at the top too with that is gilded of course um, but a dull gil gilding that would uh, scoop onto your ear and these belong to my mother and these were most proper now you want to cover every bit of yourself so um, besides the veil when you are out in public you want to of course also uh, use your fans and, and the black ostrich feather fans do cover the face very well we have here is my mother's it was an older one and this one would actually if you opened it up it would turn it go all the way around and um, again it's just it's very dull it's black and this is another morning fan from the uh, Victorian era and then of course this is one I noticed mother has some gilding on it so this would be more for the second year where you're allowed a little bit of color so um, you have the tortoise shell you have a bit of gold gilding and you have the black lace so going on from there ladies when you have, as myself, you have a suit on, you would have a short black uh, silk glove or a leather, a black leather glove um, on your hand. Again, remember the black. And in the second year, you possibly could get away with a dark, dark, dark gray. But that would, I would say, don't attempt that until after the first year and a half. Now here is your evening gloves, and in fact, my dear Tommy, I had ripped mine the other evening, and he went out and he purchased me a new pair, the tags were still there, to show you and share with you, um, so I would have a 
proper pair to show you. So you have, the, of course, the snaps for your hand to go in and for the snap close at your wrist. But these uh, ladies, if you happen to have to attend an evening um, in your, after the first uh, year and a year and a half, if you have to attend an evening social, or in your widow's weeds, if they happen to be, um, say that the three quarter length sleeves or shorter sleeves, you need to wear a longer glove. And this is a black silk evening glove, but it would also suit, be suitable for daytime during morning. And of course, we also have the black leather type glove is like that as well. So um, that is most suitable, ladies. Now, ladies, um, a very dull boot uh, with your uh, morning suits, uh, is your black boots, not, now these, these are mothers, it's an older pair of mothers, um, uh, but as you see, nothing, nothing very special about them, just your simple black boot. In your second year, and being that these are at, under your skirts, so you won't be able to see them quite well, you can wear these black, these are uh, a velvety suede, um, but, but they're dull. But all we have here is a black jet. Very, very slight black jet here right at the top of the shoe and then of course around the medallion. So that would be proper about a year and a half um, for, for having to, if you had to go out in the evening. As I said, uh, it is proper, for, they say four years, but if you, um, up to two years would be most proper. Now also I wanted to mention something. In the second part of your morning, closer to the two year mark, there are other colors you can interweave into your wardrobe. And that would be uh, dark, dark, dark plums, um, dark, dark, dark lavenders, very, very dark. But you may have that, that plum color to them. That, that is most proper. Dark grays are, are, would be permissible at this time. I wanted to show you here, we have, um, here's a lady, and she's closer to the end of her morning, and you notice that she has, still has the full black dress, she no longer has a veil on, and then she has some white around her collar and her cuffs. Um, just showing just a bit of color, but still staying within uh, the respectable traditions of morning. And ladies, I must tell you also, of course, you're not allowed to travel during uh, the first two years of mourning, um, possibly after a year and a half, but definitely not within the first two years of mourning. Uh, it, it, afterwards, the two to four years would be, uh, as times would indicate, if it was absolutely necessary. Other things, now in your second year, about a year and a half, you have your evening bags, ladies. Um, if you have to attend, goodness forbid, another funeral, you have your evening bags and this has a bit of shine in it because of the little uh, jet beading here, little black, tiny little seed beads. So closer to two years, you'll be able to take this bag out with you. Now, it's something I wanted to mention that um, about mourning, uh, we have a very, very popular piece of mourning jewelry. And it's not what you might think as we've talked about the black, and then of course here we have uh, sterling silver um, with the balls, the gilded balls. And this is uh, this would be fine with your plums and your dark dark plums closer to the second year, the end of the second year. So um, this is another morning hair comb. Uh, of course, I've got to mention your your rings when you are at the second year of mourning. You may start incorporating, as I said, some other color, as such as white. So this morning ring has. Uh, the black pearl and the white ivory pearl. Now, believe it or not, um, we, I know we've talked a lot about hair in the past. Hair is one of the biggest pieces of mourning jewelry. Uh, yes, yes, um, and there's a lot of mourning gifts you can make and give uh, made out of hair. Now, one of uh, at time of mourning, and especially in the case of my father when he had passed very sad when I think about that. The family had come together and they made a hair wreath. And it was a bit of hair from my father, my mother, myself, um, my, my sister and my brothers. 
uh, many members of the family, and a hair wreath was made, and that was hung on the outside of the door. And that was a wonderful gift uh, that one of my cousins had put together. And it was a wonderful, wonderful gift that we had the entire uh, two, first, at least I do believe the first two years of mourning, the hair wreath was hung up. And Mother does still have that in one of the parlors at Conway. So um, something very important. Now, remember I had mentioned that you may have um, a brooch or a cameo, a black, something very simple with black. Um, or in the second year, it might be something like this. Well, there are also um, places to, like Robinson and Cleaver's Jewelers here in Belfast. You can um, purchase cameos uh, that are just glass covered. There's, there's nothing in there. Um, maybe with some gilding on the outside or very plain. And then inside, you would take the hair of your loved one and you would weave it into there, and you'd be able to keep it with you um, at all times um, to comfort you, especially during the mourning period. So it would be permissible for you to have there, or you could take uh, your hair, as mother did, with father's hair, and interwoven it into a, a brooch um, to where it would be inside, and it would be exhibited through the glass. So again, you can get these type of mourning brooches through Robinson and Cleavers in Belfast, and probably just about any jewelry store by you, I'm sure. So um, another thing that has been uh, quite popular um, are the rings. There are mourning rings that uh, some families choose, uh, and your your loved one, um, if they haven't passed suddenly, uh, they and they per perhaps may be ill, they may um, prepare some. Um, oh goodness, my <laughs> my earrings tend to. Fall. They're such long drops. Tommy just got these for me, and they're absolutely beautiful. But uh, they are, of course, these are our carnelian, and they are also a permissible stone um, closer to the second year of mourning that you see me wearing. Wanted to wear them. See, Tommy, I'm wearing your earrings. So, um, getting back here to the mourning jewelry, um, again, you can get those cameos, those brooches from any of the jewelry stores. Now something else, uh, ladies, uh, that we've made for uh, members of the family, we, out of hair, our own hair, if you might, like myself and my sister, or if you have other sisters and a mother, you take all the hair and you can make watch chains, believe it or not, watch fobs, yes, um, out of your hair, and um, it's a nice remembrance to give to a gentleman that may have lost uh, one of either his wife or somebody in the family. Um, that and he can put that with his pocket watch. So uh, actually, a, a woven hair fob would be proper. Now, um, for the gentlemen, I, I, you hear me talking a lot about the ladies and what we must do. In fact, before we go to the gentlemen, I have prepared some pictures here for you. And then here is the uh, ladies. Here's a morning piece. And this most definitely is about a year, year and a half, all when you're at home. And you have your, your, your black pigeon breast um, with your, your puff sleeve and, of course, your trained skirt. But again, all black. And it's very elegant at the top with, uh, with the black lace. And you see she has just, just a very, very, very slight bit of white at the top. So this might be a year and a half to two years, closer to two years. Now, this is more proper of what I had spoken about previous that you would have with you. You would have your everything covered. Now, if you did not have uh, a veil long enough or you didn't, goodness forbid, you're a rebel and you happen to go out and about without your veil, make sure you have your parasol with you because that will cover you as well. And that is most proper, ladies. Evening gowns closer to the second year may be in this type, you know, a little bit of lace, a little bit of jet beading, and of course around this time, of course, the plum, the dark purples, uh, the uh, lavenders, they are all permissible for you. Lilac, a very deep lilac would be fine. And here we are, ladies. This is what you must all remember. Here we are. You see the crepe veil. This is 100% full crepe. And this reminds me a lot of my mother's um, morning, uh, her morning clothes, her widow's weeds. 
when father had passed away. In fact, later, mother had incorporated a lot of her morning dresses to keep using them, adding lace and a few other adornments, just white lace and just a few changing, a few things, so she was still able to wear her clothes um, past the time of mourning. Now, for the gentlemen, here we are. Um, their typical button-up black shoes are the best worn with their their clothes. Um, their morning costume is permissible for the morning period and visiting the home um, of someone who has lost, uh, has a deceased loved one. Uh, so gentlemen, always make sure you have your best shoes on and that would be your uh, leather button-up boots. Uh, if you don't happen to have leather, do make sure they are dark black. And for the gentlemen, they may be wearing on their arm, and if say perhaps Gentlemen, if you unfortunately have lost your wife, and I know how, how awful that must be, and you're going through a lot. Gentlemen, um, the, it's most permissible for you to you wear a black crepe band around your hat, showing the signs of mourning. And then with your mourning suit, with your Prince Albert frock, your black uh, Prince Albert frock with your mourning suit, um, you may wear a uh, mourning band on your arm. Usually it's worn on the left arm, but um, I, I would say either would be all right. So there are some of the traditions with, with mourning, and there's actually quite a bit. Um, as I said, you're not allowed to travel. That's absolutely not, that is forbidden. Now, I don't think, I don't think I've forgotten anything with the costumes. Oh, and do you remember I had spoken to you um, previous, uh, when we've been together at Ormiston House, and I had mentioned, of course, our wonderful uh, lavender, our fresh lavender wrapped in the cotton lawn or the uh, uh, very muslin uh, to put through the bath. Well, the lavender is very good for warding off bad uh, spirits and evil energy. Um, so this is another uh, th way of using your lavender sachet, not just for the bath or putting it in your wash water or your wash basin. You can also put this about, just hang it about the house and it, it should keep you um, safe from any, any type of evil coming into your home. Now, I want you to want to make sure I haven't missed any, I don't believe I have. Now, Going back, um, we're going to go back to Halloween a bit, and some of we want to talk about some of the things that actually frighten us in regards to that into that holiday. First off, um, our Halloween cards. Now, in our period uh, here at the, at the early part of the Edwardian era here uh, with King Edward, we have some of the best Halloween greeting cards and postcards that have ever been out. Now. Normally, um, our postcards were more, our witches looked a bit like that. But as of late, in the past year, and it's in the Denison, ladies, it's in the Denison um, new catalog this year, Halloween catalog, all the uh, beautiful postcards. Ladies, our, our postcards um, of witches are actually quite beautiful. Yes, no longer very, very frightening. And here again is a typical, um, costume with the white sheet and the pumpkin that I was talking about and many many people were wearing this at uh, the Allentown Pennsylvania Halloween um, parade in 1905 um, oh and one other thing now do you a lot of people bring out morning photographs at Halloween and because they are very very frightening now you may not be able to see this but I will try to give a close-up later here's a father with his daughter. You have to remember um, that when we have lost someone, a lot of us cannot afford regular photography, uh, depending on our state in the social ladder. And uh, many times that when we lose someone, that is the time that we get the most uh, amount out of, uh, that's the most photographs we get. So um, a lot of photographs are taken with our recently deceased ones, and in here is a father with his daughter. Now, there are families that, uh, that really take this to such an extreme. Um, many a times they, they want to make the, um, the deceased look as if uh, they did in life, which you clearly can see that, of course, they, they are missing their spirit and their soul, but um, they are seated up. Now, normally, if 
And not in all photographs, there's actually a lot that, that are frauds and not true. But the ones that are, that are, that are true and that the family meant well, and they only wanted for their comfort. They may have their loved one seated um, at, a, you know, at a table, and they may have, and with, I do believe, I, I've seen one with a young lady, and she's seated at the table, her eyes are closed, but the back of her is a complete black curtain. And I'll tell you why, it's a complete black curtain, it's in, the, in the young lady's body, it's right up against that, is because they actually have a frame Yes, a metal frame behind holding and supporting the body. Um, not only in the chair, but just supporting her, keeping her neck up. So, not all, and very few, but there, there are very few, but there are true photographs for people's comfort, for family's comfort, and they do do that, and they will put, um, they will have the uh, body pose as it was in life. I've seen many that um, are posed, right, gentlemen posed in their favorite chair, um, and one or two I've seen posed standing upright, and again, that's um, normally you can see uh, if they don't have the curtain right there, that there is a stand there to aid them. Now, now we've gone past that. Oh, and I may not want to forget, ladies, in your second year, this is year and a half to second year, I forgot to mention a very small purse for us. And here you can put your, your cab fare in there and your trolley fare. And it's very, very small and it's a little silver purse. And this is another piece of mother's that she let me use for today's um, social gathering. And she still has the old uh, jet, no, it's, it's a bit faded, but some beading on there. Um, and again, this would be closer to a year and a half to a year you, you'd be able to use. Oh, and I must. Before I go into ghost story and all that we do at a seance, I wanted to show you, let me not forget, here are a proper, proper widow's beads. 